science, natural resources, uh, food science, plant science, or what have you. Thank you for being here. Um, it's going to be a great couple of days as we explore the scientific method. And um, if you're choosing the distance learning option or if you are in person and you want to have a little bit more of a refresher or background on um, the scientific method, this is the place to be. We're going to go over all of the different steps of the scientific method um, in some detail so you kind of understand how the scientific method works and also have a good framework for your agri-science fair projects. So throughout the semester, we're going to have a lot of different opportunities to do some smaller independent research projects or some collaborative group projects that use the scientific method. Um, after all, this is a science-based course. Um, or um, you can apply this to your large end of semester agri science or project and there's going to be lots of different opportunities for us to practice and utilize the scientific method. So as you go through this presentation, I'd encourage you to pause, take some notes, reflect as needed, um, send me an email if you ever have any questions, and also be sure to have your case study open. So each course has a different case study option. So for veterinary science students, you will have the wet the bedding case study, which talks a little bit about absorbency of different bedding types. Um, and animals and natural resources is a different case study. Intro to egg science is a different case study. So go ahead and access this case study. Um, it's on Google Classroom or you should have a hard copy available to you as well. Um, and access this and use this as a tool to help you kind of take notes and jot some ideas down as you go through the different stages. And I will kind of direct you to hit pause at certain points um, to do some different thought questions, but also to go ahead and complete this worksheet as well. So. Without further ado, let's get started. So as always, why don't we go ahead and quick read through our objectives. So there's a lot here today, folks, and this is for the entire total presentation. So um, by the end of it, you'll be able to explain the purpose of the scientific method, describe how to properly select a research question, explain how to conduct ethical and sound background research, identify bias, select, categorize, and evaluate sources of information, construct a main alternative and null hypothesis, effectively design an experiment, plan for variables, treatments, and applications in an experiment, identify methods of ethically and effectively presenting data, analyze data trends to draw conclusions, and explain the importance of communicating findings with public audiences. And lastly, you'll be able to place the steps of the scientific method in order, explain the relevance of each step in the scientific method, and apply the scientific method to daily life examples. Now, I want you to go ahead and think to yourself, one question that you may have asked today. It could be something as simple as, gee, why the heck does my brother or sister or neighbor or whoever snore so much? Or why are the colors on the trees starting to change colors already? Shouldn't this be happening later or sooner? One question, just think of it in your head. Okay. Chances are this question can be answered using the scientific method. Everything that we do in our daily lives kind of can stem back to the scientific method. It's a very relevant tool, and that's why we're going to emphasize it so much in these classes. The scientific method is one specific way to help us solve problems through asking and answering questions. We use it every day in our lives. And um, the three videos I have linked here, I'm not going to show you today on the screen simply because it would be copyright infringement. But go ahead into Google Classroom and click on these live links, and you can watch them. The first link is a pretty big epic fail, so if anything else, it's good laughing stock. So I'd encourage you to watch that, um, get a little giggle out of that. It's pretty funny. Um, but the other two videos are a little bit more serious and kind of show us a little bit more about how we use the scientific method um, intentionally and without even knowing it. So and kind of think to yourself, how are these examples similar and different? Okay. So in this class, no matter if you're in vet science or natural resources or intro to egg, we're going to use the scientific method quite often, and this is going to help guide us to become better scientists and asking and answering our questions because that's super important, okay? Now, the first step of the scientific method, according to many experts, is asking a question, but I would argue that there's something that happens before we ask a question that's just as important as, as asking the question, okay? That is making an observation, okay? So, if you chose for your question that you were thinking of a little while ago, why does my brother snore so much? That's an example of a question we could ask and research about, but chances are you didn't just wake up and just say, wow, why does he snore so much? You thought in your head, my brother snores a lot. 
that is what's called an observation. Or visually, when you're waiting at the bus stop and you see the trees starting to change colors already, lose their leaves and whatnot, you visually made that observation that then caused your brain to ask that question. So the observation happens first, then the question follows. When you write your research paper for me for the final end of semester research project for the agri-science fair, um, or whether or when you um, complete um, individual experiments in class, we're not really going to have an opportunity for you to write an observation first and then a question, but you will think of the observation kind of unconsciously as you write your questions. Okay, so asking a question is the first key step. What makes a good question? A couple of key tips here. It hasn't been answered before. Previous research is not sufficient. Those two kind of go together. We don't want you wasting your time in my classroom um, completing research questions that have already been answered and publicly available. Okay, now some of the things that we do in class are going to be inquiry based and student led where you'll get to pick up your own questions. And some of them I'm going to just give you the question um, just simply to meet standards and to meet the different objectives of the course. But I'm going to challenge you whenever possible that you come up with questions that have not been answered before to kind of lump those two key important factors together. Okay, the third. The research question you ask should be important to you. So for your agri-science fair experiment, if you have a really big interest in dairy cattle, I would argue that you should probably be doing a research question involving dairy cattle, whether that involves like monitoring their heart rate or whether it involves um, feeding them and looking at um, waste management, something like that, or maybe doing a survey to see what the public thinks about dairy production. You should probably focus on a topic that's important to you because if you love dairy cattle but absolutely hate grass and you decide to do an experiment conducting the growth of grass throughout the semester, you're probably going to be bored and it's going to be just like watching like quite literally the grass grow. So you want it to be fun and exciting and important to you because you're going to be more invested in it as a result. Okay, and the last one, your research and answers will provide an answer to a problem and benefit others in the scientific community. Okay. So you shouldn't ask a question that is very basic in nature. It should have benefit to you and to the people in the scientific community. And we'll go through some examples of that in class um, and as we get closer to completing your science fair experiment. But in your head, kind of think about why these are important and if there's any criteria missing. And if you think of any thoughts that stand out, feel free to send me an email. But at this time, I'd encourage you to um, go ahead and complete the case study activity that I have given you. So again, for vet science, your is, is about wetting the bed, uh, which is just simply um, looking at the absorbency of different bedding types in livestock. Um, and each course has their own case study example. So go ahead for now, just complete stage one because we've just simply looked at asking questions. Feel free to go back and reference the slides though as well as you answer these, no need to do this all from memory. So um, thank you so much for tuning in to this first segment. Uh, looking forward to having you join back for part two. Thanks guys.